definitely double hearing this all, so I know it's good. Is it good? I can... There it is. Cool. Alright. Dude, I, I can't get over this music. If any of you guys ever played was Jackbox 4, Jackbox Play Pack 4, Nintendo <laughs> PC, it's for all the systems. Uh, the, the Monster Seeking Monster soundtrack, but holy crap, I forgot how much of a vibe it is. And, it's theoretically spooky dude, so I get to play it. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Anyways, yeah, Hello, everybody, welcome to the BNDAO stream. Today is the 18th of October 2021. My name is BNDAO, you may know me from this channel, and I will be playing a game that you probably have not heard of, and you probably will not think much of anyways. Uh, I have the anti-malware service executable having a fun day on my computer, but that's okay. That's okay. That's really okay. So yeah, you may not have heard of this game before. This game, as according to the stream, is, in fact, let's just jump right into it before the music is done as well. Here we go. Let's just jump right into this game. So, this game is called, yeah, Muppet Monster Adventure. It is a spooky Halloween, all the, all the game is Halloween, or at least all the game is spooky. Uh, game published by, who's the publisher on this one? I forgot, Midway. Oh yeah, Midway. They published the other Muppet game on the PlayStation 1, so there's that. Uh, obviously it's the publisher first. Then, whoever owns the intellectual property for the characters, Disney gets to do a double whammy on this one. And then you get to learn the developers of this game. Now, I've never heard of Magenta Software. I keep thinking um, Majestic, but they're not Majestic. Um, they're a British-based developer studio, and the only other games I really remember of this is I have played the uh, Atlantis game that they made after this for the PS1 still, but like way, way after you probably think PS1 games stopped. Um, and, uh, yeah, other than that, the game just launches you onto a title screen. Um, it's got that kind of, is it, is it really Muppet style music? It's got the music, it's got the theme. I don't know how much I can really leave it in, uh, because technically this is, uh, not exclusively video game intellectual property, but, uh, Maybe this kind of flyover of the level might remind you of a certain other kind of game. Um, oh, 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 I caught, I caught the demo out on that one. We've got a wonderful intro cutscene. Let's just... Wow, a vacation. We're finally taking a vacation. Wow. England, Greece, Arabia, Krakatoa, China, exotic ports of call. <laughs> exotic places like England. Although I guess the Muppets are We're here to run often in America, aren't they? In the middle of nowhere. Well, I know you're disappointed, Robin, but we had to accompany Dr. Honeydew for the reading of his late uncle's will. It's important to be there for friends at a time like this. May I just add the player models? About this, uncle the player models. The models I'm in this sure video are just oh, delish. What's that? Oh my gosh. Relax, Robin. It's just a tree. Nothing to be afraid of. Ooh. Wonderful door. What's with games and large doors these days? Nothing at all. Here he goes. He's going for the door. Oh. I can't imagine anything living here except things that aren't alive anymore. No, no, Mr. Robin. <laughs> That's a bit offensive. We had quite a flair for the dramatic, but I assure you we're perfectly safe. Ah, a monster! Yeah. <laughs> Are you all right, Master Robin? <laughs> Wake up again. Oh, what happened? This is the strangest segue, by the way. Beaker, Peppy, and myself are unharmed. What's the bad news? Unfortunately, your Uncle Kermit, Miss Piggy, and the others have been transformed into hideous monsters. And that's right. Off screen, just casually, the whole game sets itself up. But, yeah. But the master's evil energy is permeating the entire village. Everything in the area is rapidly becoming evil. 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 
So what are we going to do? I'm so glad you asked me that question, my young friend. Here at Muppet Labs Europe, we have developed some special... That's a good gag, Muppet Labs Europe. ...to return our friends to their old selves and save the village to boot. First, this power glove is guaranteed to get even the most stubborn evil out of any monster. <laughs> I love the power glove. It's so bad. ...is stored in this clever backpack, lest it get back out into the world again. I must still be dizzy. It sounded like you said I would save everyone. The backpack and glove are designed specifically for the amphibian anatomy. Wow, what a coincidence. Don't worry. All right, no, sure. Fifi and I will monitor your status constantly. But I... I think you're forgetting someone again. Oh, I'm terribly oh, sorry. There he is. My apologies. I will take it from here again. I... Pepe the King Prom will be broadcasting from this convenient little transmitter here to tell you how to get around the village. When you see my face, I will have something to say that will help you out. Together, we will save Kermin again. Kermin? Your Uncle Kermit. Oh, Uncle Kermit. This is what I said, okay? Kermin. Uh, as someone who has not watched know. any Muppet I've stuff, I've watched, like uh, I don't know, I guess I've seen like some Sesame stuff and skits here and there and whatever, but well, I guess my extent of the Muppet fun. universe is not in particularly deep. Get on with the saving, okay? You're a tough frog again. You're a brave frog again. Get the monsters, get the monsters, go, 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 go. But yeah, legit, uh... Yeah, Robin is, from what I remember, he's Kermit's nephew? Niece? I'm thinking niece. That's the relationship, I don't know. Uh, you play the game as Robin, not not Kermit, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna try and ignore a bit of dialogue. I'm not ignoring this dialogue. All right, so there's, yeah, there's a couple of things I'm not the biggest fan about this game, particularly that uh, you've got uh, Pepe here, uh, who's both doing the tutorials and also the challenges, and it's not immediately obvious what's a tutorial and what's a challenge at the beginning of the game. Once there's, like, fewer tutorials going on, you know, it starts going there. Uh, the other thing is also, like, you know, woo, this is a fun little portal thing, you know, like, woo. Uh, they almost lead into the level. Like, you can tell it's loading the level, but it's like, oh, there's a fade to white there. And then, we get into the game, and the game is... Spire of the Dragon. <laughs> if <laughs> you're picking up gems, you got a dash move. It's not really a charge, though. It doesn't do anything. It just kind of runs you. But you've got your uh, breath, which is uh, hitting someone with a power glove, and you've also got a Crash Bandicoot spin. Which is just icing on the cake. Uh, you'll see more of the Spyro antics, but one thing that I guess visually think makes me think Spyro is the fact that there's some wonderful LOD swapping uh, going on in the far distance there. So you can see like way off to the side, like, yeah, the ground's gone all low poly on you, but it hasn't disappeared. It's not fogged away, which is, uh, which is wonderful. I love that effect. So even if it, like, it does look very, you know, PS1 style. I love that about, uh, you know, particularly Spire of the Dragon and games that copy that, is that, you know, having the LED swapped, you know, kind of terrain really does make the world feel larger, even if you're seeing the detail flood in. It's like, oh, I mean, having it there is actually kind of neat. So, other than that, you're going to hear a lot of... Uh, dialogue. I did a bit of a practice, so I know exactly what of the first two uh, levels uh, things I have to talk to are. But you've got chests. Some chests can only be power gloved. Some can only be spun. Uh, I will keep mixing up the two because it's the knight head that is the thing that you use the power glove on, but not spin. Uh, these peacocks don't actually do anything in this level. It's very odd. Uh, I'm picking up a lot of things. So first of all, first of all, to explain the game's mechanics so much better than the game itself does, uh, I'm picking up these little star things. They are dark energy. Dark, yeah, dark energy. Uh, they're the gems, basically. They're almost the same colors as Spire of the Dragon, except the greens and the reds are switched up. So the greens are only worth one, the reds are worth two, rather than the reverse. 
but but yeah then there's you know blues and yellows and there may be more afterwards uh but yeah you're just collecting the energy uh pretty much because that's your gems uh you can pause the game and do your inventory where you can then click on the level and see that there are 300 dark energy in this level there's also five thing on the left don't tell, don't ask me what the thing on the right is because I've forgotten. I've played this game like it would have been two years ago, I think. And uh, even GameFAQs doesn't even have this game on wrap. I could have reminded myself by looking on YouTube, but nah. We're gonna play this game like like God intended, blind. <laughs> uh, the other things you're seeing me pick up these tokens. Uh, Pretty much, you collect four tokens, and uh, you unlock an ability. There are five abilities in the game, and they're gonna try and give you them really soon. Really quick in the game. Uh, this first ability, you see anything that looks climbable, you can hit triangle, and hopefully you climb it. Uh, that's pretty much it. Almost all the abilities are incredibly contextual, but that's okay, because that's the fun of it. Uh, other than that, it's a spooky Halloween game. Pretty much. It's got some bosses. <laughs> You only need two more pieces of the Muck Monster Amulet! You're gonna love the fact that, like, you know, Pepe is so... So on top of, like, the, the dialogue at this beginning part of the game. There's so much of it, it's absolutely crazy. Also, another thing, you can see the last token is there. This, this game actually kind of, like, shoves you towards where the... Um, I don't know, it puts you somewhere when you pick it up, so I'm just gonna pick up these pieces before I... Before I pick it up. There we go. Alright, ability number two. Ready for some uh, this is swimming. If you've ever played Majora's Mask, uh, it's that kind of swimming. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you can just dive underwater. You can hold X to do, like, a slow swim. But you can hold down square to do a really fast swim. And you can do a spin in the water. And you go way faster than you probably, probably expect. But you know what? I like that about swimming. It's like, you, you should go either two speeds. Like, slow enough to handle, and way too fast. Because way too fast is really useful a lot of the time. So, that's good fun. Uh, even if it's a little awkward, but sure. Uh, also... Oh, the vibration is on! Oh, they did it! They remembered my save. It's off by default, and it's a little bit sad. Why is vibration off by default when I'm already using an analog controller? Keep it on, guys. Come on. Uh, fortunately, as well, the game does support walking slowly. Which is something that you'd be surprised how many games forget to do at this time once, uh, you know, the dual analog controller came out. Uh, other than that, yeah, think think Spyro 2. So we've got the, the orbs, effectively. We've got the, the, the gems. And that's pretty much it. You're going through a bunch of levels. Encountering different things. Orbs and gems. Uh, and as I said, we're gonna basically get most of the, actually all the abilities pretty much early on. Um, my brain's remembering five abilities and you get the first three in this one level and you definitely need them for the later levels, so they 100% like push you into getting them. In fact, I think you, you have to get the abilities, like they just don't let you continue the game otherwise. Uh... The enemies give me a very, like, Spyro 1 vibe, though. The aesthetic is just, like, you know, like, big eyes, uh, kind of exaggerated proportions. Um, even, like, this castle level, it does remind me very much like a, like a Spyro 1 level typically is. And, uh, yeah, I, I was like, man, why, what's with all, like, the, the Spyro kind of influence or feeling? By the way, that's one of your orbs. Some of the orbs are just, oh, sorry, the, uh... Oh my gosh, Pepe is just never going to shut up, is he? He's never going to shut up in this level, how about that? Um, we got these little, like, I guess these switch things. They're like flying bats. I think, yeah, they're bats. They're holding targets, and you know what that means. You just hit them. Easy. Uh, you, you see me pick up these letters that spell out bonus. When you do that, some random chest on the level unboxes and has one of the, the big tokens. Um, but there's also, <laughs> there also is a token there. Uh, 
And, uh, yeah, other than that, we walk through the levels and, and we'll encounter stuff, so. Uh, but yeah, I thought this would be an interesting game, because there's one, it's, it's spooky related, it's, uh, I don't know, it, it's just a licensed property from the late 90s, early 2000s. Everybody this is what ready? I mean. Okay. This is indeed a race, right here. Go, 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 go. But like, yeah, like there's so many, You like you were hearing Pepe just go, hola, all the time. It just starts, by the way, sure. Uh, but you, you're just hearing him like prompt you all the time. And like, I couldn't even get a sentence in. Like he would just keep interrupting all the time. And that one, like interaction with Pepe, that's legit, uh, you know, what you need to do in order to get a challenge. So I'll knock the game one point for that one. At least with Spyro, it's like, you know, how many times do people talk to you in that game? Oh, well, Spyro 2 in particular. It happens a bit, but not enough that, like, you can't, like, spot what's a challenge. Um, like, because there's not that many, you know, people to talk to in levels. Yeah, it's just like, there's Pepe's everywhere, man. You're gonna hate the spot of the other, like, challenge that you gotta do as well. Like, it's just somewhere where it's like, how would I have, how would I have expected? But, well, I did that, so back up to the top we go. Where to go, okay? Hey, hey, you give him the map token, okay? Also, yeah, the dialogue just does not line up. But, you know what, there's a bit of a charm to this game, and as much as I'll rip it on a handful of things, it's also rather competent. And I think that's actually the, the most surprising part. This is a competent Spyro clone. Right when... Spyro clones were Spyro clones. Like when, you know, this is like such a heyday time to copy Spyro. Um, so, I mean, yeah, good on him for that. Uh, obviously the Crash Bandicoot spin, but you know, you take what you can get. It almost even makes the same sound effect. It's almost as if there's a sound engineer who worked on the Spyro games that's also worked on this game. I know, right? What a plot twist. Uh, yeah, there's a wonderful character who I've forgotten his name, but I'll, I'll spot him in the credits. I'll <laughs> call him out at the end. Hola. But yeah, no, he also worked on the, uh, you have no at least the Spyro Trilogy, and at least some of the Dracon Daxes and some of the Ratchet and Clanks, maybe. Superhero, okay? So, ability number three is the Glide. It's a little awkward. In fact, the controls in this game are a little awkward just in general, just because I keep thinking Spyro. It's not hitting X twice, it's X and then triangle. And you do this weird pause in the middle. But you can at least drop and, you know, bring it back, so that's all fun. Uh, but yeah, you can do the glide and just glide all over, which is good fun. Uh, the uh, Inspiro square is your charge and circle is your breath. But in this, square is your kind of hand can- I forgot what it was, power glove. And the uh, circle is your spin. And I guess in Crash, square is the spin, so even worse. Um, other than that, uh, this level's almost done, so that's all good. Uh, I'm not too sure how many streams this game will take me. It might actually take me beyond the Halloween break, but and that's okay. Because yeah, today's the 18th, the next stream will be on the 25th, and that will mean the stream after is on November 1st. Which means I kind of miss, <laughs> miss Halloween a little bit, but uh, that's okay. That's okay if it takes me three streams. I'm hoping it only takes three streams. But yeah. After that, I promise I will get back into Pokemon. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, until then, let's enjoy this Muppet Monster... I keep wanting to say Mania, but it's Muppet Monster Adventure. Um, it's an adventure of Muppet stuff. Uh, I think the last few gems are over there. Uh, there's no bonus hints on how to find gems or... Dark energy, evil energy, sorry, even worse, it's two E's. Uh, but, explore around the levels enough, you'll find it. Uh, no, there's no like, when you get 100% though, which is a little bit, you know, saddening, because it's like, oh, that, that's like one of the best parts of Spyro, it's like when, you know, when you get that wonderful alert that you did it. But fortunately, you can hit L1 and see a percentage complete, which is like, you see 98% and you're like, I'm pretty sure that one token is not, like, really worth 2% of the level, but sure. You know, we take what we can get. So, uh, how do they tie the progression of the progression? I guess the, you know, how do you unlock levels and stuff? Uh, in the original Spyro, you would note that each world has its own 
Objective. By the way, the last Pepe is on this ledge. You can take a big stab that it's over here because it's like, oh, like you can see the flag. And you can't make this jump without the glide. Here comes the sun. Flower. Uh, <laughs> am I going to get DMCA'd because he mentioned that? Alright. So, uh, this challenge is basically go up to the flowers, hit triangles so you're climbing them, and then just when you walk to the top, you've picked it up, I guess. Sure. <laughs> There's nothing really too weird. Uh, pretty normal, like, you know, collect-a-thon kind of style at this point. You know, we got, like, the, you know, time limit, you gotta pick up so many things. Uh, but this game doesn't really get too more involved than that, other than every level is at least offering its own kinds of challenges. And, uh, you know, kinds of things. You're still picking up the energy. Uh, there we go. It's a little bit finicky to pick the... Pick the stuff, but that's okay. They give you more time, the more of these you pick up, so at least you got that going on. Easy. See, good work, Robin. Did you earn this muppet token, okay? I did earn it. There we go. There we go. That's five tokens, so that's pretty much it. That's the whole level. <laughs> uh, how many levels does this game have? I think. 24, maybe? So it's a bit. It's a bit. I'll see how many I can knock off in one stream. But uh, hopefully without having a, an intro cutscene playing all the time. Which, by the way, it's a bit uh, tongue-in-cheek, that cutscene. I guess who's the market? Just the tongue-in-cheek kind of Muppets crowd. Uh, also, just before I go over in there, uh, that last switch opened up this wall, which... Reveals three lives. Something I'll definitely need. Maybe I will need. Who knows? Uh, for reference, Pepe's the prawn, not the frog. Internet culture has ruined a generation of people. Now Pepe will eternally be known as a frog. But, yeah, that's okay. So stand on the thing, and just eventually it'll warp you back. There's, I, again, there's another fade to white. I know, disappointing. The worst part is that this is definitely loading the main menu again. But it doesn't fade to black. It properly does spit you back out onto the menu. So you've got that going on. Uh, and then, yeah, you can just save the game at any point in time. And just go, hey, there's that. That's my test save. It's fine. I can save over it. It's all cool. I love, like, how quick games load and save from the late PlayStation 1 generation. I don't know what on earth was with early PS1. But late PS1 figured it out, so. <sighs> Other than that, yep, I'm just gonna keep playing more levels, which is, I guess, the way this goes about. But hopefully you guys kind of enjoy this game. Is there any way to play it? I don't think. I don't know, man. I mean, this game is not abs it, like it's it's uh it's not like no one's ever heard of it because it's got retro achievements uh but it also doesn't have uh you're gonna hear way more pepe but that's because you can't continue this level without without this that's just how they've designed it so here we go so the contextual ability now the, the ghoul friend as they refer to You can see something with cracks on it, and you can hit triangle and you smash it open. It's like the headbutt, but not quite. <laughs> also, that's right, we've kind of got all four abilities, or all three abilities from Spyro 2 already. Uh, plus the glide as its own ability. Uh, I'm not very good at not taking hits in this game, because... Maybe I should rely on the spin. Uh... But yeah, here's your idea of, and, and this is the part that throws me off, I have to hit square to do the uh, thing to target big enemies and the circle to hit the the, uh, the metal enemies, but that's, that's basically your spyro dichotomy right there, so if you haven't spotted that it's a spyro clone, well now, now's your chance. There it is. Ding, ding, ding. There it is. But that's all cool. Other than that though, I... I guess this level just kind of plays, it just goes. You've got these wonderfully large 
uh, kind of interior stuff. I love this about like platformers of this time, when just like things are so like odd on the scale. Like so much so, it's like I'm hopping down these ledges, these steps, and I've got to jump on all the steps. It's just like, like what, what scenario is that actually going to be the case? So yeah, again, here you go. Big enemies, give them the, uh, the power thing. Uh, this is not an egg thief, but he is carrying one of the tokens. Just chase him around. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, if you still feel like you need a tutorial, like, you look at this. Like, uh, that does not give me any advice. Like, I I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm just gonna chase him and try and charge him. You don't have to tell me about it. They tell you about egg thieves in Spyro 1, like, on, uh, on the, uh, I'm trying to think, the Stone Hill? Have eggs? It does. Yeah, they tell you on Town Square, so if you do Town Square first, then you'll know about egg thieves. <laughs> but if you, if you do that level, like, last in the world, you actually don't get told about egg thieves really, like, directly until you hit, a uh, with its, uh, well, the, the Magic Crafters, which is when they require you to get those. So, that's that. Uh, I may have mentioned, yeah, that Spyro 1, the uh, barriers to continuing levels is that. In this game, basically, you need the dark energy, the evil energy. I keep, I'll always keep saying it wrong. You need the evil energy in order to access uh, the next, like, levels. But the boss levels are buried by um, having the, the tokens. So, that's it. That's your reason for picking up both. How many do you need? Oh, I forgot. It's been it's been years. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, yeah, it's it's a game. So hopefully it will be a bit self-explanatory while I talk about some other topics. But uh, I love these explosions. You got a bit of a fade, a bit of a lighting thing, and then just with like giant bits of wood. You gotta, you gotta notice that that is a climbable bookshelf. Just try and look for things that are ladders or slopes or whatever. Also, I guess they keep showing you your uh, totals rather than your level amounts. But you can hit select and it just goes kind of straight onto what you're looking for. Oh! <laughs> Wonderful. Anyways, enough about... Uh, Fahrenheit. Um, I do like how this level kind of laughs back on itself as well, just before I get into any other topics. Like, we're back in that starting room, but I opened two doors. So that kind of joins back into the room and then, like, into another area. And uh, at the end of the level, it's also going to do that, which is kind of cool. Other than that, I don't remember a thing about the rest of this game, so wish me luck. <laughs> like, like, once I'm done with this level, like, that was all I practiced, just to make sure that this game was, like, as okay as I thought it was. And it is. So. Hola. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't actually play the drinking game or taking a shot every time you hear hola. Because I particularly just played it like four times, five times, six times. The first line of dialogue he had as well was also an hola. Like, not just this, but like it was actually part of a longer bit of dialogue. So, anyway, this one is another challenge. Did you notice? Ooh, all this armor suits you well, okay? You gotta hit down to scroll the text down as well. You can't just hit X. So, uh, the challenge is basically, see the statues? You wanna whack them all. There's six of them, and they're all going backwards. So... This reminds me of another challenge in Spyro 2, in the Colossus level, where you have to scare the ghosts out of the statues. I don't know, it reminds me of that. Which drinking game will kill you first? Uh, me going, this reminds me of Spyro, or Ola? I'm thinking Ola still. Ola's probably it. <laughs> so. Uh, dude, the worst part as well is that, like... I play these games, and like, you know, this game's like 21 years old, it came out in 2000. There's, gonna, there's bound to be people my age out there who are just like, Oh, I played this game as a kid, and I liked this game, and... I mean, yeah, I, I feel like there's actually nothing wrong with liking this game, like... In fact, like, there's a lot of old games, and I guess I should probably, like, call that a topic. Um, 
I find that, like, some of this era is interesting because I have, like, tangential nostalgia. As in, like, I never played this game as a kid. I only even learned about it, like, two years ago. And yet, I kind of feel its age. I feel it's kind of, like, not quite legacy because I'm not too sure uh, how many people were inspired by Muppet Monster Adventure. But at the very least, oh, I should probably grab the health. It moves away from you, regardless of, like, whether you've got health or not. It's kind of odd. Um, but I can also kind of imagine people really enjoying this game. And it's pretty alright. Like, you know, for grand scheme of collectathons, it's very inoffensive. And I think that's actually kind of, like, one of the best things you can do. Like, hey, it's a game that runs alright and really gives you that, like, Spyro aesthetic without particularly being a dull game to look at or play. It's a bit stiff on the controls, like, you move and stop immediately, but... You know, like, it's got the... It's got the building blocks, and it's put them together kind of like Spyro does. There's a bit of a polish that Spyro sometimes has, and sometimes doesn't have as well. I love Spyro, but it's, it's got a couple of quirks here and there. Um, I love this chicken as well, because it's just like... Suddenly your power glove like starts shooting things. It's... Very odd. I nearly wandered off. And that platform's going away without me. Alright. And yeah, the chicken doesn't last forever. There's bound to be a more official name for it, but it's the chicken in my eyes. The chicken seems like a dream to me now. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I... And, and actually, that's one thing I've, like, really loved about just, like, going... Going through the, the PlayStation catalog. I feel like there's probably... Maybe, like, 60... 60 might be a lot. At least 50 PS1 games I've actually like played through, or maybe I've played like another version. Uh, most of them have been short experiences, so I've not played too many of the PlayStation 1's like RPG selection. And I know it's got like a killer RPG lineup. I'm still working my way through them. I'm still getting through Final Fantasy 4, although I don't think I've played it as much as I've probably played some other games, which I'll talk about as well on the stream. Uh, but yeah, like I I feel like there's a great catalog of PS1 games um, that sometimes don't get lost to time because they're games that people are very aware of and sometimes they do get lost to time. Uh, like how many people have played uh, all four of the Ridge Racers? Uh, I know that the Ridge Racer 4 is on the PlayStation Classic. Uh, the, the little mini console they made which by the way like that thing is like probably aged pretty okay. I'm not too sure how well its emulation goes, uh, but, you know, I, I I, especially think Sony is, like, it's a weird system because, well, sorry, not Sony is a weird system, but, like, the PlayStation 1 and 2 were, like, so de facto popular systems that they ended up getting everything, and so people will associate, like, a lot of, a lot of titles and a lot of experiences to Sony, even if they're not necessarily games that Sony particularly, like, had a part of. Like, I'm pretty sure this game is a PlayStation exclusive. Right here. But I don't think it, like, existed particularly because of the PlayStation. There's a health extension, by the way. They're in some levels. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't think Sony particularly had a part to do with this game. I'm trying to think. I think, like, the original Ridge Racer might have been one. Maybe it's not, actually, considering the launch title. Um... Yeah, I can't, I'm trying to recall some other ones. But yeah, I, I guess, like, the PlayStation was just so popular, people just wanted to develop for it. Because it's like, hey, it's a game console that's, you know, it's got good dev tools, which I think is one thing, and one unspoken thing. People often look at just, like, the hardware. It's like, oh, it's not as good as Nintendo 64. Here we are, at the end of the level already. It's not as good as the Nintendo 64, but then it's like, mm, I mean, you know, you don't have to be as good as the Nintendo 64. You have to be good for people to make games. There we go, 620. Uh, if I hit select. There we go, 100%. I didn't even need to hit 100%. It just says right there. So, cool. Whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, curious world. Curious world of uh, retro stuff. All right, so at this point, I got no idea what I'm doing. But, eh, uh, I'll keep it going. I, I do appreciate as well that every level has more and more of the evil energy 
the gems than the previous levels. It's just a nice bit of progression. It's good fun. I got a little bumped out when Spyro 2 only gave you 400 in every single level because it did mean that some levels just like early game dumped you so much when they really weren't like that much longer of levels. Uh, this is the music that was on the title screen. Well, there's the last ability token already. It's just sitting there. At least I'm pretty sure it's the last. I don't know, there's only four. By the way, I love how it's like, you know, I've used the climbing a bit. The glide did not get much love on the last level. Very good, okay. Uh, did you see any swimming? I didn't. In fact, even the first level only has a lake. Like, they could have easily just not designed, like, water in the first level. They could have done anything else. Uh, I think you get jumped to there from the high ledge, so we'll save it for later. Seriously, this I, this guy totally reminds me of, like, the Earth Shapers from, uh, Sparrow 2. Do they not? I don't know. Leave a like and write it in the comments whether this enemy reminds you of some other enemy. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I do like this, like, era of games. Of just, like, these, like, quaint experiences that didn't cost a ton of money to make, but sometimes did. Um, and I guess that's a wonderful tangent to game I've been playing in the past week, which was... The original Far Cry, I was mentioning Far Cry 6 coming out on my last stream. And then I was just like, you know what? I've never played the very first one. I played 2 and 3. And I think I had played the first one for like 10 seconds and was like, this is tricky and not running well on my computer. And I ran it again and it still was... It, actually, it probably was running well, but I didn't really know if it was running like perfectly. It had like some quirks on the animations because I was running at like a high refresh. So I had to turn it down and... Some other things, but generally it ran pretty well out of the box. Give it an unofficial patch, and you can call it a day. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you can you saw that there was like a ledge there, and it looked kind of in reach, but yeah, no, it's, it's not quite. It's a little bit further out. I hope you appreciate Gonzo's face appearing in the corner every time I jump. It's it's like it's like it when. <laughs> What's the turn? It's just like some odd visual stimulus. It's just there. Uh, Beak is chilling over there. Why Beaker is over there? I don't know, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've been playing the original Far Cry. I played it, and some people are gonna scratch their heads on this one. I played it on the... There's five difficult levels. I played it on the hard difficulty i forgot what the exact name was in game but uh it's the third of the five and the game's also got a, a ticky box called auto adjust ai and i was like oh i might take that on because maybe the game's too easy too hard i don't know what that does but i feel like it made the game harder when i didn't want it to be and then i didn't really know if the game was easier when it was supposed to be although sometimes i felt like okay the enemies were a bit brain dead at times I don't know what really caused it, but yeah. Uh, so the original Far Cry, it's a first person shooter. It's actually a linear first person shooter and not an open world one, but it does still have some of those, some of that uh, kind of semblance that got carried over into Far Cry 2 and you can kind of feel in Far Cry 3 and onwards. And that is this idea of like, you've got this kind of wider jungly area and you get a bit of an option into taking on the, you know, the level in some, well, some, you know, direction you want to go in. Uh, you still kind of have to go from A to B, but you don't have to... I forgot what this ability is. Congratulations, okay? Oh, yeah, 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 push and pull blocks. He keeps talking regardless if I keep walking away, so I might as well just skim through his dialogue because I'm going to keep hearing it. Uh, so yeah, here we go. So if I wander back to the... Ooh, I don't know actually if I should wander back to the beginning of level. No, I don't think I should. Because I know I'm going to go back anyway. A... So yeah, you saw that there was a box there. His head goes all weird. So yeah, all of these are morph abilities. As in... Also... Heave -ho. I, I guess it just says heave-ho every time. Although it says... Oh ha ha here, so... Oh, well. uh, but yeah, it's got that... Uh, like, 
you know, that kind of open-endedness that I think people also really liked about uh, the Crisis games, because this game was made by Crytek, who later on did make Crisis, uh, under a very different publisher, but sure. Um, it was, yeah, I, I kind of, I pretty enjoyed it. Like an IGN 7 out of 10. Delish, no opinion. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was pretty alright. Uh, my quirks with it, it had no auto save. Sorry, it had no manual saving. It was all auto save. And that meant that I was at the mercy of whenever the game felt like it needed to chuck me a checkpoint. I knew I could have used the console. I didn't. I just wanted to see how, how it went. And honestly, yeah, I kind of wish some sequences I had the ability to save a little more often than the game decided to save for me. There's some benefits, like I kind of liked how in some places uh, a supply room halfway through the the kind of hot area would be a checkpoint. That's kind of cool. Um, I kind of liked uh, the four weapon limit was a pretty decent amount because it did mean that like it didn't give me too many options. I would have preferred having more weapons, honestly. But some of the weapons also overlap and especially they use the same ammo, so understandable but I'd actually just prefer like the half-life system of like stacking weapons over over the same like you know keyboard number um, why had they chuck like one of the gems just up here Whoop. Cause, yeah you can't make that jump how unfortunate uh... also some of the weapons did not feel as powerful as others I did not like the um the m4 that they give you early on uh, and you have to be using it. You get like this pistol that it's okay, and then you get this M4 and it's okay, and then at some point you get a silenced MP5. And at that point, the game suddenly makes a lot more sense. Uh, did this ha this does have a time limit? Yeah, okay, I remember. I remember this bit. Come on, baby, that's my fire. Okay. It does. You have all this dialogue, and you just sing a song. So. I remember this one being painful because, yeah, because you, you hit, yeah, so you gotta spin the blocks. Uh, no. No, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Uh, I was not reading the description. I forgot how you, uh, oh, you gotta shoot it. Yeah, okay. Is good enough? There you go, there's one. Alright. <laughs> so straightening it out, and then... Uh, and that's not even... This isn't even the right spot. Oh my gosh. What have they done? Oh, I'm holding down left. Okay, I guess it's just hold down or up. Tank controls. That's not... That's not it. There we go. Spin. Spinala. Oh, too many spins. There we go. People. That block is eternally being pushed, apparently. <laughs> I'm never gonna not hear it being pushed. Uh, is this facing the right way? Nope, not quite. People. Can I guess the angle of it over here? Uh, the other thing that kind of, yeah, and I guess the bit that really annoyed me about Far Cry was, yeah, it's difficulty. Uh, so the main, like, combat of the game involves you being in a jungle, shooting dudes with other guns in the jungle. Uh, one thing I really liked was that the, is that, like, it was a bit tricky to spot enemies, but you were also as tricky to spot as the enemies were, uh... And that kind of, that plays both both ways. Like, on the one hand, it's great that I can hide in a bush and not have to worry about the enemies, like, particularly nailing me. But it kind of sucks when I'm not in a bush and the enemies particularly nail you anyways. Uh, like, so far away, I'm never gonna stop hearing that, like, block being pushed. That is just eternally pushing him in my ears. And it's stereo as well, so I'm... I am full dead. Alright, so I assume that just, that moves you back to a checkpoint. Oh, that's a bit rough. That's a bit rough. At least... Am I, did I keep my tokens? Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, you got the, the dollars. 
So yeah, I, I remember seeing heroes. Like, I see the dollars. I don't know what the dollars do. Considering that I had to die for the enemies to come back for the dollars, then I'm thinking maybe this is something encouraging me to go back and do the levels again. It's not counting for this 100%, like that counter. I don't know. We'll see what it means. Considering it's tracking your progress out of 100. Who knows? Sorry. Not out of 100, out of like a number that probably looks like as many enemies on the level as there are. If I had to guess, I'd imagine it's like Spyro 1 system of like, you know, when you re-kill an enemy, they drop a little orb and you get enough orbs and you, uh, you get an extra life, like that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm probably going to suspect that the, uh, the dollars disappear. Well, not, not like that counter, but just like the number that I've gotten in this level. That's probably what I'm expecting. Uh, but yeah, no, Far Cry 1 is incredibly tough because, yeah, there's some enemy or some areas where the enemies are positioned in just an unfair way. Like, it's like, how am I supposed to know that the enemies are there sometimes? Um, sometimes there's just too many enemies and I get completely overwhelmed. Um, like, it kind of, it feels like it does expect a lot of trial and error at times. Like, sure, okay. But yeah, it gets a bit annoying. Uh, the other thing as well, and uh, some of you may not know this, is that the original Far Cry involves a super mutant, uh, like, in, you know, serum thing. So you got, like, villainous secret lab in a volcano at the end of the game, and he's got his super mutant, like, serum, and he's giving it all the, all these people, turn them into super mutants. Uh, therefore, you are fighting these, like, jockey-like mutants and these giant rocket launchers firing guys, uh, midway to the end of the game. It's not even, like, I'd say it shows up a bit earlier on than halfway. Um, catches you a bit off guard. On top of that, the mutants, sometimes, it didn't feel like all the time, but sometimes, if you had full health but no armor, you'd die from it. And... That's another bit of, like, trial and error, because it's like, oh, like, here is something that I can't, like, work around. It's just like, well, I mean, sometimes it gets me. The worst part as well is that your movement is not particularly fast, and the enemies in that game were not, like... Like, they'd hit you from further than you'd really expect with the melee. It's very odd, so... Uh, also, rip my extended health. Rip. I'll never see it again. But that's okay. All these switches, they really want me to hit some switches. Good thing there's a checkpoint right there. Uh, where do they want me to fly over to? I missed the end, apparently. Oh, I see. Oh, I think I bust up the jump. <laughs> Dang it. Oh well. Take another stab. Yeah, I mean, overall it was pretty okay. The game goes pretty cheap on sale sometimes, so I'd actually say it's alright. But do know that it's hard. I think even on the easy difficulty, it's still quite tricky. Um, and don't turn on auto adjust AI. Don't do it. You're not that sadistic. You don't you don't have to play the game on an incredibly hard difficulty just to prove it. Unbelievable! You have collected enough Muppet tokens to open the next Muppet Monster boss, okay? You know, they really expect a lot out of the player if it's like because the, the boss is right after this. And there's only 15 tokens you can get before. So that's kinda crazy. That's kinda crazy. Oh well. Uh, I don't have a ton to say about Far Cry 1. It looks really good for a 2004 game. It looks pretty alright. It's got like a, a respectable motion blur, like the part that's like subtle enough when you turn the camera, but a bit like, I don't know. But uh, it also had some really nice looking long uh, distance uh, areas. It had like a, like a draw distance on like enemies though, and that kind of got a bit of a way. Um, Oh my gosh. 
I guess I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. This is when you've got no sparks. I'm reminded of Croc in this circumstance. I don't know if I'd ever play Croc on... Perhaps what you're looking for oh my is gosh. I get it. I get it. There's two switches. I get it. <laughs> I wonder if I should play Croc on, on stream. Who knows? Uh, since I know my Greek letters, I know that just spells up the top. Uh, poser. The, the P is actually, that's Rho, so it's, it's an R, and then you've got Pi, which is the actual P, and then that's a Sigma in the middle. Uh, Omicron does look like an O, and Epsilon does look like an E when capitalized, so you got that. Uh, Poser? I don't know what they're going on there. It looks like it's the same thing over here as well. Maybe it's a puppet joke. It's a puppet thing. Yeah, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, but it's like, yeah, I... The Muppets is actually a bit of an interesting one, because I feel like they've got a pretty large, like, US appeal. I don't know, they didn't really... I didn't really uh, experience them as much. Maybe maybe they were a bit before my time. Um, that's already the end of the level, jeez. You know what that means? That one box at the beginning of the level, I had to actually walk back for it. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Singe myself anyways. Singe myself anyways. Oh well, so. But yeah, no, Far Cry 1 was pretty okay. Uh, that was mostly the, the main game that I did play. I uh, don't remember playing anything else in the week. So I'm just gonna chalk it up to that. I think I was playing too much Forza. Uh, still working my way through... Uh, actual dead. Alright, well... Uh, might as well just fly on my way back. I don't care though. Any game with a glide ability is always good fun. Because it means that like, yeah, your level design is like inherently like horizontal. But not necessarily like grounded. And I'll... That's actually really good fun. I like it. I don't care that Spyro does it as well. It's good. Every game needs a glide ability. Gotta have wonderful lava spouts. No castle is complete without, like, just a lava pool right here. Alright, so... Yep, almost at the beginning of the level. Almost there. So yeah, we got this whole bit over on the side here. And, uh, I'm missing three of the tokens, but I see one right there. So I know that that's... Okay. There's a gate here. Yeah, I guess, like, you can never tell, like, if the level is, uh, like, ending. Sorry. I, I guess you can never tell whether you're walking towards the end of the level. And I guess that's a subtle thing that Spyro gets really right. Is that a lot of the levels are, like, not actually, like, I mean, they are linear. But they actually, like, circle back to the beginning. Or they make, like, a clear, like, uh, you know, like point of like hey like you know you can now do this in the level like you open up an old pathway or something like that um not every level but definitely some levels i'm reminded of um uh it's the first level of the magic craft as well and it's like you you just like at the end you open up this like pathway Oh, sorry, sorry, at the end, like, you've literally just got a ledge that you glide and you get back to the beginning of the level. And that's after you've, like, done all this, like, descending to the level. Well, this looks like a challenge, doesn't it? Like fish in a barrel, okay? Alright, here we go. I, I hope you appreciate how many chickens. It locks on a bit, it's, it goes a bit easy on you. Uh, sometimes. Maybe I shouldn't be shooting them, like, that quick. But then again, I mean, I'm not going for a perfect score. I'm going for enough of a score. Maybe Retro Achievements thinks otherwise, but I don't know. So, uh... Alright, so, controversial topic of the week. Let's do it. Uh, I might have alluded to... Like, 
not specifically the catalyst of this, but I think I've actually alluded to the, um, the, uh, I guess the outcome of this, uh, this issue. And, uh, the issue is, what is, what is this? That must be in another area, because there's an enemy and another gems in there. Uh, what are you going to tell me about a beaker here? You going to tell me anything? Maybe I got a... There you go. Hey, it's Beaker. <laughs> oh, okay. So Beaker is the rocket. Just shoot. This will start up his rocket pack, okay? He'll zoom up into the sky, but when he crash lands, he might open secret passages or open locked containers, okay? Oh my gosh, jeez. You okay there? It's kind of weird seeing like all these like puppets with legs. You know what I mean? I actually, I used to have like a VHS copy of, um, uh, Elmo in Grouchland. And, uh, it used to weird me the heck out seeing Elmo's legs in that. Um, because like, yeah, I knew there were puppets and I knew like someone's hands up their butt. And yet, once you start seeing legs, you know that it's like some digital stitching, <laughs> like, well, sometimes it's not digital. Sometimes it is just like they're there, but, well, like actually it's a, maybe a little more animatronic. Still, spooks me out sometimes. Uh, so that looks like 100%. So cool. <laughs> I'm doing record time. I'm doing record time. So yeah, maybe maybe if the goal is to do two uh, two worlds per stream, then that seems like a swell target. I should probably do the math at the <laughs> at the beginning as well, just to double check. Um, hola. <laughs> So, controversial topic of the week is, uh, Nintendo has announced the pricing on their, uh, their Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass. I didn't actually watch the direct where they priced it, because I watched the, um, I, I guess it would have been the original direct. So this was the one where they teased the new Smash character was gonna come out later, and also they teased the, uh, like the Animal Crossing DLC was gonna be in a direct of its own, and they teased the, uh... I think that was it, really. Um, and, uh, they did mention the expansion, uh... Pack? Ex expansion update? I'm, I'm not... I'm not 100% sure what's the official phrasing on it, but, uh... Effectively, it's an upgraded version of the Nintendo Switch Online, the service where you pay $20 US, or if you are a generous soul, $35 US annually uh, for you and seven other friends to gain access to the Nintendo Switch Online service where you can play online Switch games, unless free-to-play games. I believe free-to-play games are actually exempt from that, which is kind of a bit of an interesting point as well. Um, and, uh, or at least I'm pretty sure Fortnite is, so we'll say that. Uh, you also get access to the Switch, to the uh, NES and the Super Nintendo online services where you get to play a, a reasonable library of NES and SNES games as well as some, uh, you know, some that are not necessarily uh, in the region. Like, um, I forgot which one. My brain's thinking the, the Hello Kitty, like, um, like tennis game. Not tennis, but... The one product John plays. I don't know. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, I do, yeah, I, I know there's a handful of games that are, like, not, not originally released in English, but there they are. Uh, so let me just count the levels around. I'm seeing, yeah, that looks like 12. Oh, that looks like, uh, 24. Yeah, that looks like 24. So, should be good. Let's knock off two worlds a, a stream and call it a day. Um... But yeah, the uh, the service, yeah, you get basically you get access to the online services. I think I remember the bosses being very brutal. And also they describe how to beat the boss. Me more than it hurts you. Lucky for me. Same. So I think it's mostly a wait for the opening. Also, appreci moving, okay? appreciate my health up. doesn't come back. So let's try how how far is, uh, I go on one one hit. 
And he really likes his coffins. He's really going at it. And does he appear at the end? There he is. Oh no. He keeps going. He keeps going. You can't do anything about the bats. I'm pretty sure you wait for something like pop out in like the holes in front of you. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's what you're waiting for. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Alright. Cool boss. It's not getting a bit mean though. I'll tell you that. So yeah. So Switch Online Service. Uh, honestly, and, and this is my thought ahead of time. So uh, in Australia, the pricing is 35 Australian for the annual, I think. Maybe, no, it's 30 Australian for the annual, and then I think 55 for the annual. Uh, sorry, for the, um, for the family. Uh, considering you get eight people, eight accounts, like, that kind of seems like, yeah, just, just like, <laughs> just subsidize it for someone. Just let someone else pay for half, and you pay for half, and just call it a day. And then just, like, you know, find some more friends who are willing to get onto it. Um. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully they're not too mean at the end here. Uh, but yeah, honestly, my opinions on the service, I am not a big fan of, like, paying for the online service. And here's, here's my reason why. It's not because, uh, like, oh, you're getting an extra service. Like, you know, why do you want to not pay for it? The reason is, is because the Nintendo Switch costs $480 here in Australia. Uh, and new games cost $80. You're already definitely paying a lot of markup specifically to Nintendo. I'm not really too sure why the online can't be just bundled in that. Because ultimately the online is only going to last for so long anyways. And whatever I supposedly can play on the online isn't necessarily... I thought I took a hit at the end there, but, but no. I've done it. I'm, I'm, I'm great. Anyways, like, yeah, you beat the boss and he just kind of fixes himself. And it's often smaller. Thanks, Robin. I prefer my flying with a cannon. I hit walls harder that way. <laughs> Still sane. Sure. <laughs> well, that's the first boss, so... <laughs> Friends will repeat that about six more times. I don't believe there's any backtracking necessary in any of these levels as well, so... That should keep things at least a bit fresh. Uh... But yeah, I, I feel like the Switch Online is a bit pricey. I, I don't mind paying something for the online although i really do wish it were free because it did used to be free when games used to do online services uh and on consoles the nintendo wii the ps2 the ps3 even for a substantial bit the original xbox the dreamcast there was no paying for a subscription on any of that and while i guess some games do involve more online interactions than games at the time or at those times definitely did it still feels like something where it's like, that can't be bundled into the price. I don't think, like, some of these games are, you know, demanding that much server power, you know, that it can't be subsidized in the cost. Oh, sorry, sorry, it, it can't be part of the cost. Um, so, I, I just feel that. I don't mind if it's, like, a lower amount. 20 and, oh, sorry, 20 annually US, so 30 Australian. <laughs> okay, if, does this not remind you of a, a spiral enemy? I hope it does. It better do. They're baiting me. Also, they come at you so quick because this has a much shorter range and a smaller time period than you really should expect. Maybe I should be spinning every enemy. Falls over like that. Easy. Quick flash. Done. <laughs> Congratulations! You have collected enough evil energy to open the next level. You're gonna hear that every like 200 like evil energy as well. Like it's just gonna keep happening. It never ends. Uh, yeah. I I don't know how much you really should be paying. Um, and bonus points on top of that. Uh, you didn't have to pay online 
on the Wii U as well. Let me just say that. And the Wii U definitely had a, I'd say, like a more modern degree of online mechanics than uh, you know, a lot of other systems. Maybe not the most. Like the PS3 definitely, I feel like, has more stuff. But at least the Wii has downloadable games. It has uh, games with pretty much the same online interactions as the Switch. The Switch also doesn't even have voice chat. It's on the app! That's... Uh, that's one thing where it's just like, come on, like... Out of all the things that, like, your service does and doesn't do... Like, that's something that every other service seems to do. And yet it's still not part of the Switch. It's mostly because, I guess, there's no microphone on the Switch. But, like, you tell me I can't just plug in the microphone? I don't know. So... I'm gonna really rip Nintendo on that one. Maybe the fanboys will hate me on that one, but... Uh, uh, it, it definitely feels like an odd one. Um, on top of that, I feel like the value of the NES Online really varies depending on, and this one's a big one, how many of these games you already have played. Because it can be a large amount. Super Mario Brothers is a game that I don't really want Nintendo to keep bundling in and upping the price of things for. I, I don't want to pay for things that just, like, they'll have Super Mario Brothers in them. And I'm like, cool, like, it's an added bonus. But who hasn't played Super Mario Brothers? And if you haven't, then cool. This is for you, but it's not necessarily for me. Because I already own Super Mario Brothers a ton. Super Mario Brothers was, like, the first game I ever owned on the Game Boy Color. You know, my condolences to people who have to bear that version, but sure. It's a pretty fun version, I actually don't find it too much. It's just looking up and down, that's the one catch. Um, I'm trying to think, what? Did something activate that platform, or did I just, like, blank out? Because I remember, like, something real spooky with a window in this bit, where it's like... I, I think, uh, hold on, like, you'll see one of these windows. I think it was this one over here. There's no look button. Oh, it's not that. Oh, okay. It's both both R twos. See that window smash? You just have to know that. You just have to recognize the smash. I guess it goes up for a bit. So I love that like stretch effect as well, because it's like it's obviously like just uh, actually stretching and not like moving or replacing with something, and yet it's like. It's so wonderful in this, like, time period. I don't know. Uh... I'm hoping that something... Uh... Yeah, I'm hoping that something later... Does the thing, because... Yeah, my brain was thinking... Uh, something to do with, like, this... Tombstone here. Maybe jump to it? It seems a bit too precise. It seems way too precise to, like, actually nail. So who knows. Maybe I get a better... Better angle from up here. Yeah, no, that seems way too precise. And then, of course, you can't jump around here because the ledge is too high. Yeah, no. Okay, well, I'll consider it later. Maybe there's a bouncy pad, like, over there. Like, literally over there. <laughs> Hi there. Okay, see ya. But e uh, so, anyways, introduce the Switch Online, uh, Expansion Pass. They announced this, uh, yeah, a couple of weeks back. This Expansion Pass now includes three features. It includes the Nintendo N64 Online service. So, there's nine Nintendo 64 games that will be available at launch, which is next week. Um, with seven more titles that they announced. Uh, by name, just saying that they're going to be coming. You get the Genesis Online, or the Mega Drive if you're in Europe, um, which is, again, the same service, but uh, 14 Genesis games. Um, and uh, the last bit is you get access, I think, to the uh, Animal Crossing expansion without necessarily having to buy it for 25 US dollars. Uh, the price of the pass of this is coupled with the 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 
the base price, so you don't have to pay for the base price. 50 US dollars compared to 20, or if you if you were paying 35 for the uh, family one, it is now 80 dollars for the annual. That's a rather high price hike for something which is more favorable, and honestly, I would say, oh, like, 9 N64 games. I can see, definitely, 50 US dollars worth of value in that, with more coming. But... I'd also say, these are mostly the same N64 games that you might have bought for 15, or for, for 10 US dollars individually, back in the day on the Nintendo Wii. And then had to pay again for the, the Wii U one, if they ever made a Wii U version of it. Sometimes they didn't, and they're just only available on the Wii side. But, point is, at the very least, you could play those, you know, N64 games on your Wii U in the Wii mode. At least there was that as an option. Um, but 50 US dollars, and also on top of this, and this is the big one. This is 50 US dollars not to own these games. This is 50 US dollars to be able to play them within 365 days. And for some people, that's okay. And honestly, like, I mean, if you don't particularly replay games game ownership doesn't mean as much anymore like sure but i'd also say on the flip side it's like you know i i've actually found myself replaying shorter games that i've played in the past than longer games so ironically i feel like these games these newer ones um like you know newer experiences i'm less likely to play them again and yet i don't have the ability to rent them um which I, I always find interesting, but uh, I personally find value in the ownership of these old games, and especially the uh, the ability to, to dig down and really toy around with some of these older titles. So I'm really enjoying uh, just kind of uh, working my way through uh, understanding certain PC games on the on the inside. But uh, but yeah, like I I don't know. There's value in that, and I think that's something that like you know definitely has been a bit lost to time subscription services have just done that um and i think with video games because they are one so long and two have merit in being able to dissect them or at least like being able to like re you know repurpose them in new kind of contexts new kind of like you know things running the engines or something like that uh well i wonder what's going on here uh i should probably take out the enemies first because i'm gonna get killed here uh let's go for the health. Ooh, did you see that? Dipped into the ground a little bit. Uh, the other thing as well, and I want to note this, the Genesis Online part, uh, there already exists a Sega Genesis or Mega Drive uh, classic collection on... Uh, on the switch it is 60 australian so i'd imagine it's 40 us dollars it is cheaper to get that than to opt into this uh online service by the way because the online service is only available in an annual format which means you can have permanent ownership of uh at least on steam it's 58 games i'm not too sure if it's the same on on uh the switch uh but at least it's a lot of games a lot more games than you get on that uh on the the Switch Online expansion pass. Uh, at least right now, there's bound to be more Genesis games, but like 14 is a much lower count than, you know, what you can get here right away. Uh, Sega has made sure that that also has online two-player, and if you were to buy it on Steam, you'd have the ability to actually download ROM hacks on the Steam Workshop. The most amazing, subtle feature, uh, not the VR mode, I'm ignoring the VR mode, also, look how mean that is. Where it's like, they've got these like little ledges to, like, <laughs> just recede back in and out. Why? This can't be good. I'm glad I risked it for the biscuit and I risked it too much just then. Good thing they give way too many lives. I mean, my famous last words right there. I'd imagine if you die, then back to the main menu, so... Rip your progress in the level. Which honestly, like, that's a, that's a fair game over. Uh, apart from, I, maybe I wish there wasn't a game over, like, just, just send me back to the checkpoint and call it a day. 
There's no reason why games like this need a game over when you can save state pretty, you know, pretty comfortably, but sure. Uh, I realized as well, I didn't even figure out uh, the puzzle. There's a puzzle sitting right there and I didn't even touch it. As well as also that uh, wonderful cracked, cracked window in that other level, or other bit of the level. So, yeah. Last bit, uh, the Animal Crossing expansion is 25 US dollars, so it is half the price of the pass. And in fact, you could buy a year of the base version and the Animal Crossing expansion and still be paying less right now. So, if you don't care about the N64 Online and the Genesis Online, you have zero value proposition for the expansion pass right now. Uh, the N64 Online is very encouraging, and I'm also looking forward to... Like, the fact that, yeah, the online multiplayer does work in it. I think that's something that's quite nice if you have people who own it. I guess that's the thing as well. You have to have, like, you know... I, uh, like, you have to have at least people on other Switches, or you can play locally. I guess it's that. Um, that's just a mean, you know, part of, part of the staircase. I can't believe they'd do that to me. Uh... Where am I? Where, where's my train of thought? Uh, also, one other thing. Uh, one of those N64 games is Mario 64. I know Mario 64 is like, you know, it's a launch title. It's absolute classic. It's also part of the Mario All-Stars collection, which, like, I feel like a lot of the people who are going to, like, buy the Switch Online expansion pass are also, like, they're overlapping with the people who would have bought that, you know, that Mario all started back. And on top of that, I feel like, I don't know, maybe the people who just have always, you know, they've played Mario 64 before, maybe. So, I, 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 actually, on top of that list, I remember, another game is Ocarina of Time. How many people have played the 3DS Ocarina of Time? Star Fox 64, how many people have played the, the 3DS version of that game? They're also both available on... Actually, all three of those games are available on the Wii. If you could still buy games there. I'm not too sure if you can. I don't think you can anymore. Um, I think actually you might... You might still be able to buy things, but you can't get points. So, it's up to you on that one. Um, if you're a wonderful emulator fella, then, you know, none of these games are like any like secret surprise. Uh, the one sleeper hit I love in that list is Sin and Punishment. Uh, cause I feel like Sin and Punishment, I am missing one singular. I'm just gonna hope it's in the, the one room, but now that makes me wonder, yeah, how do you get in that room? Anyways, let's do the puzzle. I think it's what Simon Says. Listen, every collectathon does a Simon Says game at some point. Do it three times, you'll get a reward. Okay, what's the pattern? Green, blue, yellow, red. Green, blue, yellow, red. Green, blue, yellow, red. Hooray. Green, yellow, red. Green, blue. Green, yellow, red. Green, blue. Last one. Red, blue, yellow, red, yellow, green. Hopefully I remember that one. Blue, yellow, red, yellow, green. I think that was it. Wow! And then just... Congratulations, okay. The arbitrarily gives you, you a token. This is, yeah, that's one thing I'm not the biggest fan of. The fact that it's always Pepe. And he's always sitting on the token. You jerk, give me the token. Why do you make me do Simon Says? <laughs> You're the one preventing me from, from saving the day. But, alright. <laughs> it's a game. It's a game. It's, it does game things. That's okay. Uh, so, yeah, so it's got Sin and Punishment. I like it. Uh, but, nah, but for 50 US dollars, it's 
it seems like it's a lot. And that, I don't know what that's going to convert to in Australia, but like, that might be 80 Australian. Point is, is that, yeah, that comes dangerously close to the price of one singular full price video game, which granted, I mean, I guess like, you know, it's a nice subscription service. But then again, it's like, you're also competing with PlayStation Now in the US, not in Australia, because they don't offer it here. I know, rip. Uh, PlayStation Now offers hundreds of... I was gonna say older, they actually, I don't think they have any PS1 titles on it, but uh, definitely PS2, PS3, PS4, um, and honestly, like, PS4 is like, you know, like, I, I see Red Dead 2, and I see Left for, Left for Dead, uh, Last of Us Part 2 on that list, and I go, okay, well, you know, relatively very recent titles. The Switch Online is offering almost the same game selection as the Wii did. That should really raise some flags. Nintendo has re-released, like, uh, only a few, like, GameCube games in a GameCube form factor, uh, or at least like a, you know, not like a HD remaster, you know, standalone version, but just like, here is a game that, yeah, was released on the GameCube. One of which is Mario and Sunshine on the 3DS, 3DS, the 3D All-Stars. And uh, the other two I'm thinking is uh, Metroid Prime 1 and 2, uh, because they're on the Metroid Prime Trilogy. Which, by the way, was released on the uh, the Wii U, because they sold Wii games on the Wii U, digitally, and they did not sell GameCube games. I can't remember where you gotta stand in order to get the height to get into there. Maybe it's just, oh, noticing the ground? I see the ground, I don't quite recognize what's going on here. My mind's probably playing tricks on me and it's probably just texture, but... I'm gonna take a few stabs at this. I remember this one throwing me off the first time I played it and... I'm looking at it and I was like, I know it's there. But I can't recall how on earth you even get in there again. It seems like it's too long a glide to get from anywhere else. So I was thinking like... Like my brain's thinking, oh, did you, did you just jump through a window? Because, yeah, they've got the door there. It's such a red herring. Maybe you just jump through, like, the close window here. No? Do you jump through that window over there? Pull the box closer? Maybe it is that. Uh, yeah, and on top of that, the, the Genesis collection... Uh, I, I keep saying Genesis, even though, like, it is Mega Drive here. I think just, like, more of my viewers will respond to Genesis, the Mega Drive. Man, you can't jump there. And yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this. In fact, even bonus points, it's got the, the bat symbol on it, which makes it kind of clear that, like, yeah, you're supposed to bat over to it. It is a, it is a narrow ledge, though. It's very odd. Yeah, because you can't quite jump in there from there. So I'm pretty sure you got to jump on the, the tombstone. Why is it so narrow? Why'd they do this to me? Oh. This is when the speedrunner says, oh no, you're doing it wrong. People probably do speedrun this game. It's probably got more love in the speedrun community than even nostalgic communities. There we go. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. And yeah, there's the last little, last little token. Well, at least, oh no, I'm missing another. Oh yeah, because that's a, the bonus one at the end. Alright, we're all good. <laughs> All good. <laughs> ah, I'm trying to think. Is there another game or really anything? No, I like, yeah, the value proposition really hurts for people who, um, you know, have played these games in the past because there really shouldn't be any obsolescence to playing these older games. Uh, I think the only thing is, of course, yeah, you're running them on an older system. If you are if you still only own these games on the Wii, you only own this stuff on systems that only support composite video output. Or, or component, in the case of the Wii, technically, but still. It's like, you know, it's a very... It, it's not HD. There's no HD output. Um, yeah, I guess, like, these games were never intended for a HD output, but... You know, th there's a certain element of hardware modernity that is not quite being carried over. Like, you're having to rebuy these things in order to experience them on newer hardware. Uh, I guess that's a luxury that you don't get with any other media. Like, you know, if you own, you know, 
uh, an album on vinyl. No one gives you a discount for buying it on CD or or uh, SACD or um. Do people do Blu-ray audio? Is that a thing? Is that a common thing? Uh, 5.1. We'll just say that. Like, any any like future purchase is a future purchase. It's not you know you get no benefit. So I understand that. But on the flip side, it's like here is a service that it feels quite pricey. Uh, and especially to, I guess, like, people who have played these games on systems from not even that long ago. And I guess that's the thing, is that, uh, like, I mentioned CD. CD came out before the NES. And there are still CDs out there. You can have a CD player from 40 years ago. And, uh, yeah, like, if it still works, it'll still play a new CD. For the most part, I think maybe there's a, there's a maximum file uh, or, like, CD length. Uh, thing that might be a thing with newer CD players. At least newer, like, later 80s. I'll just say that. Um, but in general, it's like, yeah, like, there's no reason why your CD player can't play... Oh, sorry, sorry. Like, you know, the CD format has existed for a long time. Software, like, goes so obsolete so quick. Like, it's crazy. And that's what I mean by, like, you know, it feels like such a, such a burn to have to buy these things again. Um, because, yeah, there's a lot of times when it's like, oh, there's a HD version, or a, or, um, you know, like, like a, like a port with extra features, or something like that. There's always a lot of that in, going on with, with games like this. Um, hola. hola. <laughs> well, we got the obligatory volcano level. How many, how many things have we got? 380? Alright. Sure. I keep spin, I spin the, the hats, I'll tell you, the helmets. How much of the game did they just expect you to glide, and how much did they... you can just jump? There's a fair bit of stuff going on at the beginning here. That's not a glide. Nah, no, that's a... That's just a go. Uh... But yeah, I guess also, just as one extra thing, this is not the... Uh, the N64... Sorry, this is probably the N64 Super Mario 64. And not the Mario 3D All-Stars HD upscaled version. Like which some people day. might go, hey, is that not as good value? We got the crazy taxi arrow. You know it's good. What is even happening here? What, what exactly are these? This, this feels... Quite easy, considering it's six. <laughs> but sure, I'll I'll accept it. So go get your mappy token, okay? Well, I'll I'll take it. I'll take it, man. I'll take it. Ah, uh, how do you get out of here? Does this platform just keep going and then sink, or does it keep lapping around? I guess it keeps lapping around. Okay, cool. I uh, I know what I'm doing apparently. That's kind of crazy. I'm already at like 1,300. Like considering you're picking up like single bits of treasure. I was gonna say. You know what I mean? Like just seeing that counter like slowly rise throughout the game is always good fun. Yeah, this music's very energetic and then ends really soon. But sure. Ah. Uh... So, here's a question. What do you do as a consumer? What do you do when you see the Switch Online expansion pass and you go 50 US dollars? Well, you can easily go, hey, I don't want to pay for this. And, and honestly, like, yeah. Like, if you don't like it, don't pay for it. This actually does feel like it is just a bonus part. It kind of does, like... I, I don't hate the value proposition, because if they keep adding enough services or enough games, I can understand paying $50 once to play the games. I guess the problem is you're paying $50 now for, like, the things that you do have now, but you don't necessarily know if you're getting, like, that much more within a year's time. Um, and that's always a risky thing. And in fact, that's, that was one thing with the NES Online, is that People were paying that much for the service before they included the NES Online service. That 
only became a thing like a year after. So people were paying 20 bucks uh, annually just to, you know, play games online. So I guess, you know, they've definitely sweetened the deal to some extent. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily what people wanted. Um, considering you get things like PlayStation uh, Plus Gold, uh, which I think it does cost more. But you also get to play some relatively brand new games on your account while you're a, a subscription holder. Uh, which is, yeah, something that Nintendo just doesn't do. Um, also, I guess uh, another comparison I forgot to mention, the um, Xbox uh, Game Pass is one where you legitimately get to play new games. Uh, like, you know, uh, what's one game? The the Good Life. I remember seeing it in the uh, E3 trailers. I, I, I'm just like, oh, it's on the Xbox Game Pass. So, give it a go. I hear it's alright, actually. The, the, like, few people who have played it on Steam in the past week, there's barely any reviews. But they're all positive, so I'm gonna say, yeah, it seems like it's a good game. Actually seems to work out. Um, but it's like, hey, that's that's a new game that's out. Meanwhile, here I am looking at the Switch Online, the N64 stuff, and going, Man, I have no intention to play these games again, to pay for playing them again, let alone I don't even own them. Like, that's, that is one thing that really, like, stings about it. But yeah, ultimately... At least it's not divvying up the player base. It's not like it's offering me a service that I can't get anywhere else. Because I can... Well, I mean, technically you can't really buy, you know, N64 games anymore. Unless you're looking in the right places. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just leave it at that. But, uh... Yeah, on the, on, on the one hand, it's like, yeah. If you're advertising to me as a guy who already owns these games, that's what I've got. You know, so... You can't get me on that one. Uh... I, I feel like I'm walking around in circles on, on my points. I should really write this down and just, like, write, write into a script. But who knows? I kind of like rambling for two hours. Uh, so, yeah. You can easily just go, hey, I don't want to buy these games. And call it a day. Uh, alternatively, and, and I actually, I've kind of stepped into this one as well. I've honestly slowed down my purchasing of brand new Nintendo titles. This really stings because I feel like I would enjoy Metro Dread. But I've gotten enough enjoyment out of games that, like, are older, and then coming back to games much later down the line, like, you know, when I feel ready to play them. Um, I've honestly, like, I've found it so much easier to not get spoiled on games anymore because I don't, like, follow a ton of people on Twitter and stuff who are also playing games brand new. It's kind of like, hey, like, you know, we'll just play whatever. Great tip. So, Great tip. Time your jumps here carefully again. Hola, hola. hola. He's everywhere. He is everywhere. He, he exists and doesn't exist at the same time. Look at this ghost thing. Ready or not, time to play hide and seek again. Also 15 times. I guess you could follow him to it. So there's that. <laughs> What do you mean you gotta jump? Who agreed to these rules? He's going, he's definitely going. He is also he's also very very uh, humid by the fact that I keep breaking all his chests, but sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll give this game one thing. It's like, hey, every level's at least like, you know, trying to do something a bit different. Even if it's like, yeah, I've, I've got all the abilities. Like, that's it, pretty much. But you know what? It's like, hey, you know, it's a lava level. They've all got that spooky theme. I get to keep it up for Christmas. Christmas? Halloween. Whoops. Whoops. Wrong, wrong holiday. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can, you can not buy these services. And I've, yeah, I've... In, in turn, I've actually not paid for Switch Online. And, like, to a Nintendo employee, they're probably thinking that, going, oh, dang, like, here's a guy who probably would. Like, I own way too many Wii games for my own good. Like, I, 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 I bought a Wii U. How do I go from owning a Wii U to owning fewer this Switch okay. games than Wii U titles? Like, you give him the map it I think the key thing is that, like, okay, well, one, I've kind of moved more to, to PC, I guess it's that, but also, like, there's generally, like, less that I'm excited about because I'm having to pay more for that kind of stuff. 
I think the Switch games are definitely neat, but the Switch console also cost me more to start off. I guess that's the one thing as well. The Wii U costed less uh, for the basic model, that is. Um, absolutely gouged on the, the, the you know, the... Have, expanding the 8 gigabytes of EMMC uh, storage to 32 gigs. Like, that's, that's a joke. The, uh, EMMC does not cost that much in 2012. That was never a thing. I... <laughs> I hate it. I, I absolutely hate that. Um, I also kind of hate the the fact that, yeah, like, I think the 3DS costed... Was it $300 when it came out? It was quite a fair bit. It's like, man, you know, like, Nintendo's constantly done some really, like, odd pricing. I've been burned out a bit too much. I'm feeling good. Just paying, paying later. Uh, but, you know, that, that's a tangent. So, <laughs> subscription service, I don't know. Up to you. But I feel like, yeah, there's there's a lot of value to having these games. Um, and I think that's something that, like, all of these subscription services kind of need to, like, make aware. Is, like, in, in, the, in the context of Nintendo, I think it's pretty safe that these games will probably be on the service for as long as the service is around. But I don't know if it's necessarily going to, like... Like, if you buy it for the promise of playing your favorite N64 game, Will you? I don't know. You might be only stuck to games that aren't relying on licensing. Uh, I think they managed to get like they managed to get like something with licensing. I, I think I recall that. But you know what? What's the odds that you get Goldmine on the service? It, it exists. I mean, they did make the 2010 Goldmine, so it's been sooner since the last Goldmine than that was to to the original. I guess it's that. But you know, will you? Is that actually, will that ever be a thing? Um, you do have Banjo Kazooie, which means there's actually a chance that Perfect Dark might end up on the service, so I guess it's that. But, you know, you're not gonna get Beetle Adventure Racing, I'll tell you that. Beetle Adventure Racing is not coming to the service. I'm gonna eat my own words if that ever. Oh, oh. If Beetle Adventure Racing ever comes to the N64 Online, I swear. Um, I think the other thing as well is that people are very excited about the N64 Online part and not the Genesis Online part, and I, I, I know I said exactly why, but. I think it's actually kind of surprising as well that, like, even, like, Nintendo fans really, like, don't care. Um, and yet, they'll care about the SNES online, I'll tell you that. Like, you know, it's like, oh, cool, you get to play Super Metroid. And it's like, bro, like, fantasy stuff. I guess it doesn't count, but sure. Uh, although, I guess in the same way, is the SNES online going to include, like, any of the Final Fantasies? Probably not, because, you know, Square has just released them on their own. I've never already done it at this point. I don't know how those um how those remasters or re are they remasters remasters remakes or Redux or port? Who who did this precise platforming? Who put this here? It's not fun. Oh, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. Wow. Wow. Gosh, how much platforming do I have to do now? I wish I had a checkpoint. Uh, yeah, I think that's my rant. Oh, 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 uh, one, one last point. So I mentioned acquiring games in, in unfamiliar and unsupported means. And, uh, of course, I would never recommend that. Uh, I would always recommend legally owning these games and transferring them into uh, whatever media you can because you are the physical owner of a video game. Now, it, <laughs> once you are at that step where you have a digital transfer of your own game, is it actually... I'm pretty sure that, like, whatever terms and conditions, like, anyone says on, like, copying, like, software, honestly, like, as long as you don't distribute that to anyone else, I actually feel like court side with you on that one you should be able to digitally transfer you know your games onto other media for your own personal use in the same way that i'm pretty sure you can do that with audio maybe you can do it with video i'm not too sure um but i definitely know like audio has been through that fight like ages um so I, i'm gonna say like hey you got the blundo seal of approval you can you can transfer your video games rip your video games dump your video games onto on to CD. I get. Wow, really, really. I got. I got boned. I got boned. Can't believe it. Oh, they don't even give you the the money back. I feel ripped off already. 
So once you're at that means, look at that. Now you have, and this is this is beautiful. Now you have your game in a digital media where you can now play on any other device that supports that uh, that digital media, which fortunately can include any extra software. Uh, this can include, and, and I still love this, the fact that RetroArch runs as a universal Windows program and can therefore just run natively on an Xbox series, an Xbox series, with no work beyond a $20 developer fee because you have to basically dev mode your Xbox, but that's kind of amazing that like, hey, it's a $20 fee, like, that's, that's a surprisingly low amount to, to enter developing. On, on the Xbox, which I actually, I think is quite incredible. So, good on Microsoft for that one. But yeah, it's the fact that, like, people are so passionate about emulation that we now run into this fun part where I'm looking forward to seeing the Switch Online N64 stuff come out because I want to know if you wait three hours on Bowser in the Fire uh, Sea on Mario 64, if you wait three hours, is that platform going to rise because of a floating point error? Because the Wii Virtual Console emulated incorrectly? Uh, are you gonna get like fun things like the N64, like, uh, or sorry, as uh, Ocarina of Time failing to do the sleep mode properly? So like when you like hit the home button, it just panics. It has to like reload like the entire state or something. I don't know, it's doing something weird there. Um, like I'm curious about like how this actually does emulate. I'm hot. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. I should have taken it. I should have taken it right away. Um, all right, all right. I've got to get that 10. i got to get that 10. I guess I could go around the other way, can't I? I probably can, yeah. Here we go. Oh, it's, it's a bit far. I actually might think I need the other one. Darn. It's it's just so like jittery because like yeah the the I can like point the camera. It's just some very odd angles and the ledge like gets narrower and wider whenever it feels like. And then you also got to do a glide jump here and you got to kind of kind of edge it out and then just like. Scrape it by. There we go. Call it a day. Don't have to get there again. Cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, emulation. I mean, like this, this is the first. I think this is actually like me playing. No, not even. I was gonna say like me playing Tomb Raider like for the past month. That's the only game that I've played that's like been not emulated. And it's like no, I've been running on DOSBox. It's technically emulated. <laughs> I don't think I've played a single game on the stream that hasn't been emulated. Like, because, yeah, it's just, it's so convenient, and the only, I guess, legality that people need to run into and be aware of is the acquisition of these video games. If you've legally transferred your video games from your physical media into a digital format, who cares that you're running them on your own computer using other kinds of software? Never mind also, that's other kinds of software that's just, you know, it might not even be doing anything copywritten. Like, in fact, yeah. Almost all of these mainstream emulators are not, uh, they're not, uh, using any, you know, I guess illegal tools. So, I guess that's another one. It's a, yeah, you're, you're competing against someone just wanting to set that up uh, and cough, cough, not, uh, skipping the first set. Doing it legit. Okay, so I can jump back here. I, oh, the, yeah, the door on the other side. Yep. So this door opened up, the far end. Hey, would you look at that? Yay, end up at the beginning of the level. I got the S. Well, I guess that's the only thing I gotta worry about, just picking that up, isn't it? Because I'm on 23, this is 24. And that's definitely all the tokens, all the energy. Ah, oh, I'll never get it right, I'll never get it right. And now I've just gotta wander all the way back. At least appreciate these kind of like rooms. Now this, yeah, I'll give this game more credit. It definitely does feel very Spyro. 
like, they've done all the right steps, it's definitely been pretty good. Oh, I've, I've actually been enjoying it a bit more than I actually would have expected. Even if it is still, like, you know, relatively a bit easy, the, the beam is just kind of low, but yeah, it's actually not too bad. Is there any way to play it beyond finding an old copy? Maybe. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Good old Switch Online. So, that's the thing. I don't think I've got too much more to say about it. Yeah. Um, I guess this also comes, like, in the wake of people uh, claiming that they would just, like, emulate Metroid Dread. I guess this is, like, an interesting one where it's, like, we hit this, like, fun bit where, like, people were complaining about, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just, like, seeing, like, you know, basically Twitter straw, man, maybe that's it. But, like, I was seeing, like, people complain about how, uh, there were articles written about Metro Dread going, like, oh, like, you know, why pay for it when you can emulate it? And it's like, oh, but it's a brand new game. And then people go, like, yeah, you should wait for three months before you illegally download the game. And it's like, no, you generally shouldn't. And honestly, I feel like in, in the context of the Switch, is the emulator actually doing the game justice? It might not. I don't know actually. I've not tested Switch emulation, so I can't I can't guarantee it for you. But at least if it's like PS3 emulation, it's like mm, it's close. It's almost there. And for some games, it probably is there, but it's definitely not there all the time. Um, Wii emulation definitely has its quirks in a lot of places. Look at these wonderful steps. What is more spooky than pirates? And guys willing to like punch you after a while. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, where did this guy come from? Mm, this can't be good. Not an, not enjoying dying though. I'm actually worried that I'm probably gonna take it considering I'm you know, burning through some lives a bit quickly. But I guess you could just play the first level again. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, people were saying saying that about, uh... I guess about, um... Uh, Metro Dread. It's like, oh, you shouldn't emulate because, you know, people worked hard on it and you want to pay money for it. And I'm like, yeah, I, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. Um... I actually, I, I also kind of agree with the sentiment that, like, games are costing more and therefore I'm anticipating, I'm not saying I'm asking for it, but I'm anticipating that people start charging more for, uh, for, you know, entry-level video game experiences. What I want out of that is I want to pay less on DLC, because, jeez, man, like, everyone talks about, like, just base game stuff, and it's like, it's so obvious that, like, there are games out there where it's like, they they just, you know, the game goes out the door and then they fill it in with DLC and they just cost more for that. Uh, I don't think Nintendo's really guilty of that. I don't think they're particularly guilty, although Smash DLC is a bit kind of pricey for what it is. Uh, I didn't see the objective. I'm just going to assume I walk into it. Cool. I'm picking up the sh- I'm in the poop. I'm in the Kool-Aid. Oh, am I actually gonna get DMCA'd because it's playing the, the Muppet music? I better talk quite loud over it just so you don't hear the Muppet theme because that is definitely a copywritten musical theme that you certainly don't want to play on your stream. I'll, if I get DMCA's, like, again, I always record these streams and I always isolate the audio, so I will sort this out, but it's definitely gonna be good fun having a, like, <laughs> sift through it. I was gonna say as well, like, I, um, I had to actually... Eat, even better than sifting through it, just, just, you know. Run the fair use gauntlet. I love that about copyright music, and just like everything, like going through YouTube systems. Like I know, that is safe than sorry on YouTube's end, of just like, you know, hey, if, if there's copyright holders who believe that their content is, you know, concerned, it's safer to, you know, ask for forgiveness, I guess. Corey, you're a buster. Uh, Unbelievable! You have collected enough Muppet tokens to open the next Muppet Monster. I, I assume I've gotten the boss after that. Gosh! It... I guess just spin him. Just spin him. 
The beam does nothing unless you specifically have to use the beam. That's it. Such a shame. Uh, but yeah, yeah, then... So, okay, okay, I, I got derailed twice. So, the, uh... People said for Metroid Dread, don't emulate because it's a new game. Simultaneously, I think the common consensus people said on the N64 <laughs> online stuff was, hey, here's Project 64. Now, one, why are you not using Moopin or Parallel? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Project 64 is a bit of an old one. I even kind of complain on, like, when some speedrun sites or some speedrun communities are like, hey, if you run an N64 game, which I think, um, when I was looking at the Toy Story uh, speedruns, because, like, yeah, like, I... I I beat the game in less than two hours. Like, I can actually, like, do it pretty okay now, which is amazing. Uh, but, um, the N64 version, if you're running on an emulator, and which you're specifically noting that you're running on an emulator as well, which, fair enough, you gotta run Project 64. I'm like, can we not, like, verify that, like, other emulators run the game just as well, if not a bit more accurately, which is exactly what we're looking for? Like, Running the game on an emulator that might have, like, cycle inaccuracies or, like, limit unlocks uh, is kind of something that we should kind of watch out for. Uh, not saying that Project 64 is bad, and honestly, like, it's gotten all its improvements. And also, it's historically been a strong one. But it's also historically had malware in one of its versions, and uh, I think it definitely had a lot of quirks when it came to visual uh, representation, so that doesn't mean cycle accuracy, I know that, but... Uh, I find that, like, you know, having that visual accuracy is quite comforting. I don't know, it makes me feel like the game is running better, even though I know it's not. Or, or sorry, not running better, running more like the hardware typically is. Um, but yeah, like, a lot of people I was seeing on Twitter were going, Hey, no, I'm good, I will decide to just pirate all of your old video games. I'm like, one... You're announcing that? Like, you're just, you're just saying it, just straight up, like, you're gonna do it, that's crazy. Oh, that's a glide. I guess now they expect you to be able to glide, but... I don't think they've always expected to have all the abilities by now. Um... I guess, yeah, you just do the jump. This definitely reminds me of, um... Uh, one of the swamp levels... <laughs> Got on the swamp level. I've played Spyro 1 so many times and I cannot remember the level names. Entirely, entirely my fault. Entirely, uh, sign of my age. That's how you know I'm getting too old. I can't remember Spyro 1 level names. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, I, like, there's a, there's a duality of man. And honestly, like, I mean, either we should say emulation is okay or not okay. I don't, I... I still find it's kind of odd that it keeps showing up in, in, uh... I'm trying to think how I get up to here. I probably just jumped from the high ledge. It's weird that, like, emulation keeps... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Well, nearly dead. I'm taking my N-word pass right here. This can't be good. I, ha I have untaken my N-word pass. Ah. <sighs> Burning through lives so quick. Uh, but yeah, like, honestly, like, I, online communities are very kind of, you know, I, I guess, uh, I guess the, to use an unflattering word, they're very schizo on this. Like, the opinion seems to sway very wildly. And it's weird, because I wouldn't expect, like, you know, like, I know they're not the same people, but you'd imagine the majority opinion wouldn't change like that quick on the fly. But yet, yet, it seems that people are okay screaming to say, hey, I feel justified in emulating, when really, you should feel justified in emulating regardless of like, the world around you, or alternatively, you don't feel justified in emulating. Like, like, it's one or the other. Honestly, it's like, you know, do you feel like you should be paying for playing old experiences in a different way you know, than is intended. First of all, there's that. Secondly, it's an acquisition of software that's not necessarily being sold. Um, I guess in the context of Netflix, like, yeah, like, you know, the media is the media. But then video games, it's like, hey, I'm playing, you know, Mario 64, and then, you know, like, I'm able to, like, mouse look and fly through it. 
I guess, like, technically, you're, you're running the game as it originally was, the software as it originally was. Um, but let's say, yeah, like, let's, I mean, I, I still say the acquisition of the software is, you know, the key thing. It's not, it's not the fact that you're playing on your computer. Like, that's, that's fine. And, you know, you should be able to transform your software in any way you see fit, as long as you're not, you know, circumventing paying things. Uh... But yeah, I guess on the other hand, it's like, hey, say for example that the game was only available, uh, sorry, never available, and then you, and, and in fact in my case, I, I find my Earthbound example to be like a real interesting use case, because like, I live in Australia, there was never an Australian version of Earthbound, I can't, like, they never sold the console that would play American versions of Earthbound down here, and you could not buy American versions of Earthbound, the only way that I could possibly get it is by going through, like, you know, trying to buy both systems from third-party places. It's like, I am either, uh, you know, depriving someone of that, or just, hey, here I go, I download a 16 megabyte file off the internet, and I run it on SNES 9X. Man, that, I, I keep, okay, okay, I swear, I keep, you, hopefully, you can catch how many times I die after I rely on the quarter second it takes for that to come up, I should just hit the spin, just hit the spin. Spin all the way. Spin to win. It's just a spin game. I gotta, I gotta think it in my brain. I'm still on five lives, by the way. It's, I seem to be getting some spare lives here and there, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, for my oh. How could this happen? So yeah, for, for like my Let's Play back in 2008, I, you know, I illegally had downloaded the game. Like, the game only then got released in Europe and Australia uh, in 20... in 2016. On the Wii U, I'm pretty sure it was 2016. It might have been before or after, maybe a little bit, but it was definitely like, it was only then. And still then, now we're in the state where now you can't get the game again. You have to... Oh. What is going on? Why is this game like suddenly kicking my butt all of a sudden? It's because you only get... Well, I guess it is four hits, but... It's four hits that, like, feel a bit inconsistent. There you go, I found the one bit to rip on this game. And they don't give you little health balls again. How could they? Yeah. Uh... So yeah, so for a brief period of time... The game, and I guess it still is, considering I own a Wii U and stuff, but for a period of time, the Wii U version, or, you know, suddenly became the only way to acquire this game in my market. Like, I guess that's one thing of, like, you know, piracy is piracy, but it's also, like, I mean, are you denying a sale? And honestly, like, acquiring things that are not available in your region is a real interesting angle of piracy from nowadays. I have no answer for it. I've got no clue. So, uh, but yeah, ultimately, I guess, like, if people want to claim that they're going to just, like, pirate things and play them on Project 64, like, I think, I guess, Nintendo should take a look at this, because weak, like, PC markets are, like, so easily piratable, because the game runs natively. You don't have to worry about someone dedicating a lot of their life to writing a software that reverses one of your game consoles. Uh, and, oh, you know, it's the worst part, the checkpoint is right here. This is the second time now, we're gonna, I'm gonna keep counting how many times there's a checkpoint right after I needed it. Just, just being patient. I got the U. But yeah, like, I mean, if people are gonna say they're gonna pirate something, I think Nintendo should look at it and go, hey, like, you know, what's the value proposition here? And the value proposition is like Everybody eventually ready? there. I think okay. it. I think like it is gonna happen. Go and honestly, Nintendo. like I don't think it's too bad if you say, hey, like you pay for it for one month and you get to play all the stuff. Yeah, you're definitely pay for. You know, it's a cheaper service to play all these NES games and all these SNES games and all these Genesis games and all these N64 games and your online service in one year. Like, I guess people are going, hey, but now like in two years, now I've paid a hundred US dollars. In three years, I paid 150 US dollars. What am I actually getting out of it? Um, 
and honestly, I find a lack of ownership is such a killer. That is actually a killer. Because it means that, hey, in 20 years' time, I've got to pay you to walk in that door again. And that's if you still have a door. If your door doesn't exist, then, oh, okay. So, ultimately, I guess, like, you know, some people do get hitched on the fear of missing out, but some people also kind of go, hey, I'm going to shrug my shoulders and go, I don't care anymore. I'm I'm out. See ya. I think that's a, that's a bit of a tricky one. I think Nintendo's been a bit unwise in not offering ways to just buy stuff. That, that's the reason why, like, even... You know, like, on the one hand, the Xbox Game Pass is great because you get to play all these games for a, a low recurring price. On the other hand, it also gives you a discount to just buy the games. So if you're a frequent buyer of games, the Game Pass actually makes a lot of sense. And it's amazing that they're the only, like, I, actually, I think PlayStation Plus gives you, uh, like a buying discount, but it's like, yeah, Nintendo, take some notes. That is how you get people to be frequent buyers. This, like, and, and I guess that's the key thing, is that like, I, I feel like Nintendo's dropped the ball on appealing to the kinds of people who would buy games over and over again. Because it's like, yeah, here is a service that doesn't benefit them in any way beyond a legal way to play, or not, sorry, not even a legal way, because yeah, the emulators, I mean, it's illegal, it's the acquisition. Um, you know, at least, at least some convenient way to play N64 games online. Proceeded mostly by a lot of the games also not actually having online. Like, Mario 64 doesn't have online. Uh, Ocarina of Time doesn't have online. Um, oh, sorry, it doesn't have multiplayer. Uh, that looks like all the tokens. No, it's not at all. I'm missing a lot of stuff. Wow. Wow, actually. How did that happen? How did that happen? I got to the end of the level. Missing all the stuff. We got stuck camera syndrome. We did it. Camera's actually not like too horrendous in this game, apart from just like some of the jumps being a bit weird, but I mean, you can see where you are in space and it's not too bad. Uh, my brain wants to say that there's like a jump here, but I don't see it, so... I'm not seeing anything too magic around around here. Uh, I did jump back there, so that's all done. That ledge is not anything with anything on it. I can confirm that by jumping up here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's my spiel. I've got nothing more to say uh, other than don't pirate things. That, and especially don't pirate things that are like easily just purchasable if you can't afford a game like on the one hand it's like yeah I, I guess like it's technically not a missed sale but it is also like I mean you know games are a product and you shouldn't really be you know circumventing paying for a product you should instead go hey there's other games I could play doesn't have to you don't have to play the newest the newest games and not pay money for it you can just pay smaller amounts of money for older games like yeah i guess you're not playing the games that you specifically want but i mean if you're not paying for them then i don't think you've really got a really got an angle on that one just, but yeah like there's tons of games out there if you really want to play play stuff there's also a ton of free to play games even just like on a, on a level of like, hey, like, if you're on a system, like, you can still play, you know, ironically, you can play Fortnite, you can play, uh, I think Pokemon Unite is a free-to-play game that they've got going on. Um, I don't know if you need the Switch Online for that. Maybe. I'm feeling not. Uh, and then, even then, it's like, yeah, if you're a PC player, you've got such a catalog. So, sky's the limit. Uh... But yeah, that's the bottom line. I gotta keep mentioning it. Uh, I don't know if anyone's gonna grill me on it, but uh, it'll probably happen at some point. Yeah, so there's that over there, and I see it. I see that. 
Maybe I just gotta go from over there, because I'm thinking like the jump is a bit too far from here. Although the glide is like, it doesn't drop your height as much as you probably expect it does. So yeah, I think this is just this whole side area that I just never went to initially, and I just followed the level like it probably was. Oh my gosh, it's, the Kool-Aid is like magnetic. How does this keep happening? Oh my gosh. Bonk. This is not enough gems. There's not enough gems. There's also not, uh... It's not the missing token. Okay, this is, this is a bit exciting. It's like, oh, where's that missing token? I'm not seeing anything over here, so that's okay. I've got this lighthouse, but it seems okay. I've done this race. Hola. I could say hi, right? Like my grandpren used to say, war is shell. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> It's, it's weird that it gives you the same message. I assume that just means I've already done it, so that's fine. I'm feeling there's like a, a spooky secret somewhere, maybe. Spooky secret for Spooky Halloween where I rant about Switch Online pricing for an hour. I'm amazed at like one, and, and actually this is something that I like, I really want to like watch out for and uh, I honestly feel like I am getting, like, way old, way quick. I don't know. I'm only 25, but, like, bruh, it's, it's... Like, I don't know. Uh, but I also feel like I... I don't know, like, I might be, like... I, I don't know how to put it. Like, you, you feel like when you get old and you get, like, just, like, you know, very minor, like, conditions that are just, like, oh, like... Okay, I guess. it's It sucks that, uh, like, you know, I've gotten old and there's, like, some kind of condition. It doesn't really stop me particularly from doing what I would love. But it, like, it keeps kind of coming up in, like, weird ways. I feel like I, I, I'd i get, like, a tick or something. Because I feel like I'm, like, stuttering more in my speech. I'm not too sure if that's because I'm talking a lot. Maybe that's just it. Like, I'm just trying to talk for two hours straight. <laughs> trying to fill all this empty space. Fill all this Muppet music so I don't get DMCA'd. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh... But, I found sometimes I, like, I'll, I'll say a word twice, or, um, in my head, like, I'll sometimes, like, think of two words at the same time, and then my mouth will just, like, I'll say, like, a hybrid of the two words, or maybe, like, a mix, like, I swap a letter. Uh, like, if I say, like, tongue twist, I'll say, like, twang twist or something like that. Maybe not, maybe not ex ex as exaggerated as that, but you know what I mean? Uh... It doesn't, yeah, like, it doesn't stop me, and I can always, like, correct myself, because I can hear myself saying it, so that's fine. But, uh, I'm also just curious if it's like, oh, is that actually gonna, like, stop me, or, like, you know, slow me down later in life? Who knows? Uh, it's what Muppet does to a man, it's, it's I feel old. I feel, <laughs> feel antiquated. Why? Okay, so we got these, and I can't do anything about them. They're just here for show, and also to hit me on very odd occasions. Uh, I, I love how, like, sometimes it's just like, I'm, I'm just sharing the stick, because it's like... Because I don't believe there's any... There is a little bit of analog. With, with charging, but it's so minor. So just for reference, if I talk to him again, he tells me again. He tells me it again. Okay, so now I'm nearly at the end of the level. Is that a shadow? Is that like something on the above me? No, that's just something weird. That does look a bit odd, but the ground text is also different there, so I don't know. Great level design, by the way. <laughs> just notice that one. Uh I don't assume they've uh 
Nope. Nope, I've just... I, I, I hit the edge of the level. I did it. Uh. Well, I'm glad I did that. Uh... I guess he would have died behind me. Uh, does that mean there's enemies in front of me? Or I must have picked that up anyways. No. Who knows? Still, um... Yeah, that's a concerning amount of tokens that I'm missing. This corridor seems to go on for a bit, and yeah, that, like, that light, that, sorry, not light, but like, it looks like there's a dot on the ground. It is right in the center. So, I don't know, maybe it is the texture. Again, like, I'm not seeing where the, the lingering secret is. Uh, the other thing that I find, like, if I'm getting old as well, is, uh... The one thing I really don't want is, like, for me to, like, be a different person, if you know what I mean. I know that, like, sounds so existential as heck. You know what I mean? Or it's like, if, you know, you, you get all, sometimes you get like memory loss kind of stuff. Um, not my age. <laughs> like, there's some things I don't remember doing, like, as a kid, but it's like, that's more just because, like, they weren't important things. Like, that's kind of it. Like, yeah, I don't remember, you know, like, all my teachers' names, because it's just like, yeah, some of my teachers are just like, I don't know, they, they came and went, they're teachers. But, uh, but things just like, oh, like, you know, I don't want to, you know, forget, uh, the core memories, uh, that's a, that's a movie phrase, I don't, I don't know if that's actually like a, like a, the doctors on, on memories, maybes, maybes, that's it, there you go, that's the slurring, I've done it. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean, where it's like, you know, I, I, I like, uh, <laughs> I, I like some of the personality traits that I've acquired over time, so I was just like, oh man, you know, like... It would suck to, to not have those. Uh, and whether it be... This is just... Oh my gosh, that was a wall the whole time, and I didn't even look at it. I just was like, ah yes. Not a wall, but no, it was a wall the whole, t the whole time. Can't believe it. Oh my god. I'm kicking myself on that one. Oh well. Well, I found it, and that's the best part. But now I've also got to walk to the end of the level without necessarily taking more lives, but that's okay. Well, that is definitely it for that level. Yep. Cool. Glad that took me a bit of extra time. <laughs> uh, now I get to talk about existential stuff instead of Muppet Game. I'm talking over the music. I can't believe it's not the I, I can't sing it as well. I like, I would love to to sing along to the music, but no, it's copyrighted and I might get I was gonna say sued. I'm getting very cynical at the end of this this uh, stream. I told you that. I'm just like, man, you know, like how their internet communities talk about emulation like this, and then how their uh, <laughs> memory loss? I don't even know how I got onto that one. I just kind of, you know, <laughs> said I'd stutter my words sometimes and call it a day. I've said call it a day like 15 times this stream as well. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. But you know what? It's, it's wonderful here in Sydney where we've got, well, <laughs> uh, ignore that one reason you may be thinking of. It, we've got wonderful weather. It's, it's spring, it's like, it's that wonderful, like, mid-20 degrees sometimes, and actually, like, low 20s, like, or on the dot 20. Uh, although we've had horrendous rain. Actually, no, sorry, I take that back. The past week, we had that, like, wonderful thunderstorm slash hail that came into the city. Uh, so, that's, uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful bit of just, like, absolute freak weather, and here I am about to say, ah, yes, we've had great weather. No, no issues, none at all. Yeah, it's a legit horrendous like storm. Um, 
because yeah, I came in and uh, definitely wrecked things. Um, generally, Sydney is on the better side of uh, natural disasters, but uh, yeah, storms, nah, we get them. Floods, never. At least not, well, maybe Western Sydney. I think Western Sydney's gotten floods before, but uh, at least me on the north side of the harbour near yeah, nah. Um, and the harbour itself. Not really. Uh, we don't get severe, like, strong hot days. Usually doesn't happen. Beware the wear bears. Still morphed, because that's, that's just, you know, that's, that's what you're aiming for. Ah, uh, this portal still looks good. The polygons aren't, like, too visible. That's always good fun. If anything as well, like, yeah, the model quality isn't particularly, like, high in this game, but... It's not like at a horrendous amount. Oh my gosh, I want to read an essay before I start. So, you think you can beat me? Ah, you must be joking. Ah. I'm not too sure what's going on there. So I, I assume what's going on here is uh, don't get hit by falling things and then spin stuff. I'm worried I'm gonna like fall off though. Don't forget to jump over the bees, okay? I hope you like that like first hit, by the way. Oop. So he's cutting up the platform a bit. I guess that's you know a threat. Does he shoot bees at you at the end? Because that seems like I'm just hitting the platforms quick enough that he's not getting getting the bees. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's a bit of a bit of a challenge. I don't know where the bees were. Your guess is as good as mine where the bees were. And he has fixed. He's not furry in any way. Oh, the first time I climbed to the top, and look what happens. Well, all I can say is thank you, thank you, and thank you. Go. Cool. You know what I appreciate about all these Muppet games? They actually get the Muppet voice actors. That's one thing that I, I swear a lot of licensed properties just absolutely drop the ball on, is missing out on using the voice cast. Um, I think the Spongebob games also do a good job of that. I, I hear they do alright. Um, I'm trying to think of like another licensed game. Anything Disney! They never do it. So, who knows. Anyways, with that, I will hit the save button. We'll save into the slot. I, I'm glad I saved after the first level and then never again afterwards. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, with the save, this is a... <laughs> I guess 25%? I don't know what's going on with the coins, I'll figure it out. It looks like total coins, who knows. Uh, but that is basically uh, a third of the game. So uh, I'll continue with the Neverleaf Forest in the next stream. But for now, I would like to thank you for watching the stream. And... There you go. I've got a screen just for that. So if you're on YouTube, which currently the Twitch viewership has been a bit quiet today, but that's okay. So probably on YouTube, in which case, uh, please give us uh, a subscription because it looks fun on metrics. And I don't really think there's really anything after that. You can watch other streams and you can, I guess you're watching this stream. So you already know that the VODs get uploaded. Uh, so you can feel free to tune in every week. I guess you can also feel free to tune in on Twitch uh, live on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, oh no, it's daylight time. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, so it's plus 11 uh, UTC. Uh, other than that, I, I'm actually having a good time playing this game. It's got a little bit, a couple of quirks here and there, but I'm honestly, yeah, I'm remembering it actually pretty right, so it's going okay. Uh, anyways, yeah, with that, have a great week ahead of you guys. Stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and remember to always stay frosty unless you're in australia in which case it's bound to get hot pretty soon so anyways have a good one everyone